This week I want to talk about your very own Alice in Wonderland experience and the oxymoron that is the relationship. I'm going to explain more. Welcome to the Mindfuckery podcast, which is featured in Feedspot's top 10 of emotional abuse podcasts. I'm your host, Elizabeth, and in here we explore areas others fear to tread. I'm the founder of The Divorce Sanctuary and creator of Wound Talking and The Original Wound. I'm also author of Finding Lily, The A to Z of Emotional Abuse and Divorce Matters. I've been a woundologist for over 20 years, working with past life wounds, clearing ancestral trauma and working with this life wounding. And it's through my own personal journey I know how much this hurts and how confusing life becomes. So many questions, no real answers. And I'm on a mission to help and educate as many people as I can on the effects of trauma on our lives and our children's lives and helping them heal the wounds of our mothers and our fathers. It stops here, it stops now and it stops with us. So welcome along for the journey of a lifetime. Hello and you are very, very welcome. I want to talk about oxymorons and your very own Alice in Wonderland experience. And I I think I've touched on this in other places. I know I talked about it in my book, Divorce Matters, and I'm just trying to remember whether I did in the A to Z of emotional abuse. Let me explain more about that. So an oxymoron is something that contradicts, actually it's wording, but I woke up with this thought that the relationship actually contradicts or is an oxymoron. However, an oxymoron in literal terms is a figure of speech that when maybe two words are put together, they actually contradict each other. So um, like deafening silence or organised chaos, which actually, and maybe it is a group of words that are oxymorons describing the relationship because, and this is the thought that I woke up with, if you think about it, you believe you're in in, in a safe environment, but you can, that is the furthest from the truth. You think and you're made to believe that they are the only person that you can trust and they get you through gaslighting to believe that the people surrounding you are the dangerous ones and not them. So other examples of oxymorons are old news, painfully beautiful. So these are two words that are put together that contradict each other. Alone in a crowd, actually, that's for deafening silence. So you think about all these words, if you put them all together and stirred them into a soup, you've got an emotionally abusive relationship. It's the contradiction of everything. You think you're safe. It's probably the most unsafe or one of the most unsafe places you could be where you're not in a war zone, but you are not realising that you are. And you might see there are a few problems and try to do something about it and are scoffed at for attempting to do that, attempting to repair something because that isn't actually what the abuser wants. The gaslighting that took place convinced you that what you see as the truth, what you believe is true, is actually a lie. So you can see something, you know something to be true. You've been brought up with a set of morals. They are your truth and you're then convinced. And it might be, I did touch on this a couple of weeks ago, with the, about the Dirty John Netflix series. I started watching again, following a recording a, um, something for YouTube. I didn't put it out because I was so ill and I probably sound really awful. I haven't even listened to it again since I recorded it. I then went off and rewatched the series of Dirty John. And in that, he meets someone who's got a lot of money. She's got three children, a boy and two girls. You can see that the daughter that lives with her could be a problem to him moving in, to him putting his feet under the table, to him taking control of this woman's life. When he turns up on their first date, I'm going from the series. It's a true story. It's been written, a script has been written for the series. It started as a podcast and people were hooked by this podcast 
So after all of the events that had happened, a journalist, I think it was, got hold of Debbie Newell saying he wanted to interview her and they actually put a podcast together and went through what had happened and she spoke about the relationship and so many people related to it had been, had met someone like John and Netflix took this and then created a series. So in the first series, you see the daughter Veronica opening the door and sneering at him saying well, who who are you are you the courier and he's turned up to take her on a date he's wearing a pair of shorts and a polo shirt then he flips it around and he starts wearing scrubs but this daughter veronica is going to is going to cause him problems he's walked into this really nice apartment obviously she's used to being surrounded by nice things and you know He's, she's saying, don't pick that up sort of thing. Or can you put that down? It's really expensive. So he then starts saying, look, I'm a doctor and I've trained and I've done this and, and putting this persona out. But he can see the two daughters are going to cause issues. And so he starts attacking them from the other side. One of the scenes, this daughter keeps her bags in a safe because if they're kept at a certain temperature, they're very expensive, she can resell them for very near to what she paid for them. And he sees this safe and she turns around when she's getting a bag out and finds him looking over her shoulder asking, you know, what's going on. And then she gets um, angry with her mum and saying, you know, what is he saying over now? Is he sleeping over? And she goes off and I think she's early 20s, maybe mid 20s, and arrogantly, childishly maybe, she flicks a fruit bowl on the floor as a demonstration of her not being happy about this situation. And he walks, or he runs around after this and says, don't worry, I'll look after you, I'll look after this, I'll tidy it up for you, you shouldn't have to put up with this behaviour. And the second daughter turns up, she's been away, she's studying, I think she lives with her boyfriend, I'm not sure which one's older, and, and he's rude to her. Debbie and John have moved into this apartment, and she can pay for a year up front, and takes this on for them, because he really likes it. And this other daughter arrives and stays for a few days, and she she's like why is all his stuff here mum why you know what's going on is he living here she says well he stays you know and so she speaks to her sister and says I think he's living there and so she starts looking around um and just to see whether his stuff's there and she finds a lot of his possessions and then starts to question what he's doing again he verbally attacks this situation and he then says you know if that was my daughter this is how I would deal with it and he goes into this protective mode so this is what's going on in these relationships they're taking situations they're taking the people in your life and they are creating a scenario or questioning why you would be listening to someone and stepping in and saying hey I'm really safe I'd protect you I bet you've never been protected like this before I've got your back I'll do anything to protect you and yet they're not their focus is what is in it for me what do I get out of this and what can I do? Because very shortly after that, they are married and he's got his eyes on the prize. He, he knows she's got a lot of cash in the property and he says he's going to take it and he's going to put it somewhere in a safety deposit box. And she says, I didn't think you can, I don't think you can do that. And he says, oh, you can, I know somebody or other. The money disappears. He says he's invested it with someone. When she goes to this safety deposit box, there's also a trigger so he knows that she's been there. He's set up, put a scenario in place where she's threatened within the home. He's got cameras up now protecting her. He can see her moving in and out of the property. He's putting drugs in her drink. There is so much going on. So this is what I say. The relationship is an oxymoron. You believe that you're safe, but it's one of the most unsafe places you can be. They create this environment that is 
anything but safe. And you might think you're making good decisions based on the information and the way that you're being treated, but they're anything but good. However, I don't want you to be punishing yourself. What I want from this is, and I hope I'm explaining this, is for you to realise you're not alone. There are a lot of people that have been through this. There are a lot of people that have been duped into these relationships. A lot of people that found themselves wanting to believe this person. Maybe they've been taken care of in a way, protected in a way that they've never experienced that before. They want to trust the person that's abusing them because they don't see it as abuse because it's different to what they've experienced although underneath it isn't and they later come to realize that this was very abusive it feels so different it feels so different to what you've experienced before so when I say it's an oxymoron maybe I can't say that in literal terms but figuratively it is it's the most unsafe place it's probably even more unsafe than sitting in the middle of a battlefield, although perhaps a soldier might not say that. Unless you've experienced emotional abuse yourself, it is so hard to understand what's happened to somebody else. It really is, because there's this mental fog, this mental confusion. And I've used the clackers before, a toy that I had growing up two plastic balls on a piece of string and you pulled them up and down and the purpose of them was to clack but this is to me what the brain is doing it's so confused it doesn't know what's right and what's wrong and this is that Alice in Wonderland Alice through the looking glass and that is a metaphor for any time that the world appears unfamiliar and it's almost as if things were turned upside down. It's similar, it's similar to looking out from inside the mirror to find a world both recognisable and yet inside out. And if you think about everything that happens, if you look at the Alice in Wonderland film, she tumbles down a hole. She gets to the bottom following the rabbit and he's gone through a small hole. Actually, I can't remember how it happens now. It's a long time since I've seen it. And she tries to get through the hole. She sees a key. She remembers seeing a key. So she reaches for the key, but she can't get through the door. And she remembers seeing a potion. Or she takes the potion and shrinks and then remembers that the key's on the table. So, and it just goes backwards and forwards. It's so bizarre. And the cards are painted roses and nothing is as it seems in this relationship and this is why I say it's your own Alice through the looking glass experience it's that moment where you don't know whether you're the right size or whether you're in the right place whether what you're being told is the truth or not which direction to go you don't know what to do next and in those moments, I think it's best not to do anything, to step back and to calm the nervous system down, to calm the mind down. And this is one of the reasons it's so important, if you can, to stay in your body. As I said, the thing, the gaslighting that went on, the tricks that were played on you, the words and manipulation that happened, the confusion that's going on. You might, depending on where you are, you might be seeing someone step into your shoes and it looks like they're living your life and they look like they're having more fun than you did. You're in pain and they're smiling. But is that the same smile that you had when you were in the relationship? A false and fake smile, pretending everything was okay for the camera. Behind the scenes, it was a completely different story. You might still be in the relationship, not sure what to do. Not sure how to get out of the relationship. You might be further out. You might be preparing for divorce. You've calmed your nervous system down a little bit. You can now see the manipulation that went on. And then it starts to get triggered again with the divorce. You might be all the way through the divorce. It's over and done with. They're still in your life because of children. Still playing games. Living this life that looks perfect to the outside world. But I ask you, like last week, to step back and remember 
the chaos behind the scenes, organised chaos. You might be in that place of not knowing what to do with yourself. You know, your whole life was consumed by them and all of a sudden there's nothing. And that is a very painful place to be. I remember it so well because there are so many questions. There are far more questions coming out of the relationship. You've got no closure so you don't know what's happened and you've been told it's all your fault. So this is why it's so much safer to be in your body. And the, the two really, really quick tricks that you can do are grounding and breathing. They're ways of stopping those thought processes. And if you can build them into your daily routine, maybe once a day or three times a day, honestly help you enormously as I said coming out of these relationships you have far more questions than you have answers and it's so easy to slip into rumination thinking about the same thing over and over again and the rumination is the process of continuously thinking the same thoughts which tend to be dark and sad and it can be dangerous for your mental health and prolongs the ability to be able to think and process your emotions to start to see this as an abusive relationship and you might still be protecting them and you might still be in that place where you can see it's abusive but if somebody points something out the walls go up and you're protecting them as said an oxymoron is actually a figure of speech and it combines two words that contradict each other like organized chaos like deafening silence old news painfully beautiful the relationship you were in was actually the most unsafe place so although the words emotional abuse emotionally abusive narcissist a narcissistic relationship they do sum up what it is what actually happened inside the relationship is like an oxymoron it's two contradictory things that are happening you actually think you're in a safe place but it is the most unsafe place you could be I'll put some links to some free resources I do it via my link tree there's lots of different things on there from affirmation cards to journaling prompts and self-care guides. There's some meditations on there, grounding in the breathing should be on there as well. I hope this week has been helpful in picking apart. It might not be, it might be the through the looking glass, totally confusing, unrecognizable, inside out, back to front, upside down experience. I just like to sometimes look at different ways of explaining it to help you process what's been going on. I really want you to understand that you aren't alone. A lot of people think that they're the only ones that have gone through this or they feel very lonely. It is an extremely lonely place coming out of these relationships. And I promise you, you're not alone. And if you feel you are, please come and join me in the Divorce Sanctuary on Facebook. I'll put a link to that as well in the description below. Sending you loads and loads of love until next time.